Hello everybody, I'm Vamin4278 and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Now I am continuing the series on how to use logic and all that funky jazz. So, so yeah. So in uh, this episode we're going to be learning how to uh, make a very simple, uh, very basic uh, code lock. Now, uh, before I start uh, actually showing you how to make it, there's probably most definitely better ways of making it, but right now, uh, this is actually a pretty simple, uh, I guess you could say, more advanced version of this kind of lock. Because uh, pretty much, a, well, you know, a lock, a code lock is having a certain amount of inputs be active, and then if those inputs are uh, required, another input. Uh, won't be active. Pretty much, to, to, you, you could literally make a very simple, uh, do it this way. A very simple lock simply by having, oh, come on, a AND gate and a few switches, and that could pretty much be it. Like, you could have certain switches that needed to be flicked, uh, and that could equal lock. It wouldn't be safe, because then someone could just go around and flick every single switch until it turns on, but that's pretty much essentially a very simplified version of how this one works. Now this one's a little bit more uh, advanced, but it's not uh, foolproof per se. Uh, in the fact that the code that you need to put in can be put in in any order, uh, and as long as you put in the correct numbers, uh, it will output put an output in. Output in, make a output. So pretty much. Uh, I'll show you how it works. So here we have, uh, you know, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Uh, obviously, they're not numbered because uh, I tried to make, uh, well, not try. I, I did make this all in vanilla, uh, as you can see. And uh, essentially, so this is just a reset button. And uh, again, there's a lot of other things I could add on to this one to obviously. Um, Again, make it better, but this is since this is a very simple uh, introduction to logic. Again, possibly in the next video, I can uh, of a uh, the logic series, I can uh, make a uh, more robust, like foolproof kind of system. But again, remember, this is just a series of understanding and making very simple things. Uh, so first thing you obviously have to understand in scrap mechanic is that even if you do have one of these locks, I mean it's not really going to do much good either way, just because, again, since there's the explosion update now and everything, and also, again, because people can just literally go in and, you know, delete blocks, but still, it's the whole for effect, or if, again, you are trying to keep things safe. Don't exactly know why I need to go that, but yeah, so pretty much, uh, let's just input the code, and you'll see here, because I might mess up the code, uh, but you'll see uh, how it works, so let's just do, yep, you can see here, you kind of goofed it. So you can see here that the code is zero... 0972 or 2709, like whatever, as long as the 0, 7, or sorry, 0, 7, 9, and 2 keys are pressed in this case, it will activate this. And then I can simply do this and it will reset it. Uh, and it's actually pretty good. It didn't take me that long to make, so it shouldn't uh, take too long to do. So uh, I'll go through more through a through a few more examples of how this might work. So let's input the code. Oh, and well, it uh, it I, I put the wrong code in, so it uh, it reset. Well, uh, let's uh, try that again. Oh, there's uh, another one, and oh well, well that resets it. Okay, well let's try. Oh, I almost got it. Maybe it's three. Nope, it uh, it didn't work. Okay, it's. No, so pretty much how that works is, uh, well, I guess I should really get into how the lock works properly, but pretty much what it does is if a uh, incorrect number is put in, so digit or just thing is activated, if a button is activated that is incorrect, uh, and not one of the codes that out is output to the, well, the output, in this case it's a light, it could be again like a, a piston or a controller, some, something like that, uh, it will reset the entire thing. Uh, and then... Well, yeah, so I guess let's uh, really get into how this works, uh, and yeah, so uh, it looks like there's a lot of logic on here that is complicated. It probably, again, could have been smaller. In reality, it's actually not that complicated. So first off, we're actually going to go over here. 
and if you guys remember this buddy of ours, the uh, Nor or bit memory, which is a Nor gate or uh, two Nor gates, and then an Or gate and an AND gate connected up uh, into this. So it's a Or gate into the Or gate, uh, one uh, Or gate into a Nor. Uh, sorry, yeah, an Or. Ugh. And then or into an and, and then one of the nors into it. So, so it's it, ho hooked hooked up in this kind of square pattern, gives us this piece of memory. So I can do it that, like that. Like it's it's very good, very useful, uh, very versatile. There again, if you want to look at the uh, last episode of uh, bit memory and logic related things, uh, you can go check that out to get a more in depth detail on how it works. But pretty much. Literally all of the logic on this uh, entire lock piece uh, is bit memory, and then the only there's only three parts here that aren't uh, a part of bit memory. It's yeah, it's pretty pretty uh, simple. So uh, let's pull it out, and right off the bat, I know you guys are going to notice that it's quite a bit wiry, but it's actually not as complicated as I think. So I guess let's uh, get into this. So as you can see here, uh, I'll put away the wire tool just so it's easier to see. You can see here that there's four pieces of bit memory that are highlighted. And guess what? It's the 0, 9, 7, 2, or again, whatever. It's those pieces of bit memory that are lit up. And pretty much the output, so here's uh, it's, it's, Put it input that button. So you can see here that it changed uh, the, you know, what, what the bit memory is putting out. So as you can see here, it's connected into uh, this AND gate. And pretty much all the outputs of the uh, bit memory are going into this AND gate. And simply if, again, you know, we input the right code, it activates the AND bit gate because you have to remember an AND gate is all inputs must be active for it to be active. And then the AND gates is simply connected to a light, or again, can be connected to any other input. Uh, yeah, and that's really it. Uh, these, uh, so e e every piece of bit memory is connected to the black button, and literally the black button is, you can see here, it's just connected to, pretty much it just resets the entire thing. So if we see here, if I try to get a good angle, you can see here that it just resets every piece, and I have to remember, good thing about this piece of bit memory is so let's say it's uh not activated or it's uh, it's active but then I go to reset it well, like in no matter how many times I want to reset it, it it doesn't glitch it out again unlike this bit memory again which no oh, whoops <laughs> wrong one which pretty much see w one problem with this bit memory, you, you, you get it just go watch the other episodes to find out I probably shouldn't be explaining that because that's taking up way too much time uh, but pretty much every piece, every not piece, every uh piece of bit, yeah, piece of bit, right? Yeah, I guess so, is connected into uh yeah, actually every piece. Or well, not every piece, but uh, almost every piece, I believe. Uh, how would I explain it? Uh, pretty much how it does the whole. Oh, I already. Messed it up off the right. How it does the whole, oh, it resets if you, uh, put a improper, uh, input, a proper, you know, code in or something. You know, punch the wrong number kind of thing. Is pretty much all of the, uh, non-colored white blocks, well, the non digital ones, as you can see here, it's taking an input and then pretty much it's putting it into a OR gate. And then so all the ones that aren't white have their outputs in an OR gate that then feed into a AND gate. It's literally just like one little thing that's into a, an AND gate. And then that AND gate is connected to all of the reset points uh, the same way that this black button is to reset it. So this way it just resets it back to the starting position. Uh, now, obviously, the white ones aren't being input into the black one because if they did, well, then every time you tried to put in the correct code, it would uh, you know, reset it. Now, again, obviously, I could have put it uh, if if I want to spend more time on this and make it even more complicated, I could have added a special 
mechanism or something that makes it so you only have you can only you have to put it in in a certain order or else it uh, resets. But again, I want to make this as simple as possible. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna go into how we're going to uh, make this. Now I already uh, have some pre-made bit memory on my uh, in the lift that I have saved. So instead of going down and placing in every individual thing uh, to speed up the process, I'm simply just going to go in and there we go. Uh, again, I you could just use nine and not have to worry about the zero. I just prefer to add zero just because. Uh, so. Uh, let's start off with, actually before we place those on, let's decide where I want the buttons to be. So you could, uh, the position of the buttons doesn't matter, uh, just as long as you have, you know, the button that it, you have assigned one is connected to the one digit. And you know, again, don't do like, oh, this is number one, this is two, but then like that's three, and then again, so, so like, m m make it in a obvious, you know, good order, so that would, you know, not be confusing to you and people who tried to get in here, but also it's supposed to be confusing to people who are trying to get in here who you don't want to be. You know what I mean. So let's just place down the buttons. Again, color doesn't matter, I just painted it. Uh, well, we can paint this after, uh, just because, and then let's have a reset button over here. Uh, I can actually probably make that smaller. There we go. And again, you don't have to make it this small. You could make literally everything as close to as possible as you wanted to. Like, I could put the reset button here or something. Or this could be the reset button if I didn't want to have a zero. Again, the choice is yours. Or, if you didn't even want to be like a numpad layout like this, and it's just here's a bunch of random switches, and then you need to make sure you press the right ones kind of thing. Totally fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is, just for simplicity, as much as I know that this is the one over here that is the reset button, it's just always nice. Uh, personally, I just like to label them. So what I am going to do is uh, how do I want to do this? So I'm just going to go up here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece down here. This is just going to be immediately deleted. This is just uh, to start to help the help to place the uh, first few uh, blocks, and then everything else will be easy. So. I feel like having, uh, let's make it as close as possible to the one that we have on display. Okay, so, uh, as you can see, place down all the bitmary now again. As you can see here, uh, the way that the bitmary is placed is, you know, a little bit differently, but that's not going to affect the function. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to play, uh, get rid of this. Uh, this doesn't actually have any functional property. This I just put down there just to help, uh, place down the bitmary in a orientation that I thought, uh, you know, would be nice. And then all we have to do is we just got to Finish. Again, this stuff can go anywhere. You could put it in this corner or something. Again, but just for simple demonstration, I'm going to build it like this. So the first block here, in fact, I might actually, I actually want to change the orientation and then set that one back. So the first one at the bottom here is going to be an OR gate. Uh, not an XOR, just a regular good old OR gate. Uh, I'm going to color these just because, uh, personally for me, I like to have my inputs colored uh, white and then my outputs colored black. Uh, but you might do it differently, or you might not do it at all. This is just for me to know that I'm hooking everything up properly. Uh, now, this block at the top doesn't actually need to be an AND gate. It could be another OR gate. Uh, really, it just needs to be the output, because uh, you have to remember uh, the way that we're going to, and I'll, I'll, I'll actually demonstrate this when we're hooking things up. You can't have two uh, pieces of logic connected to each other by the same block. So, uh... Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just take a simple, so I guess, let's, uh, let's make a different code this time. So let's do, I don't know, uh, let's do zero again. So zero, and then let's do, would that be, so, let's do four, two, that, would that be seven, six? Yeah, okay. So let's do four, two, seven, just because, you know, last number on my name. Or, uh, uh, didn't name it, so, yeah. So now what I'm, I'm really just going to do is to stop with some confusion as I'm just going to paint everything else a 
another color. Again, not actually important to the functioning of the device. This is just for me. I just chose green just because I did, and as you saw, I had different, you know, the memory of it. It just, just makes things easier. So, alright, so let's get uh, up to hooking things up. So, with this bit memory, uh, what you always want to do is the side that is active first uh, can be the input. Or it, it doesn't really have to. In this case, I'm going to hook up, so let's take the... Actually, I should probably hook up the reset button first, so... Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take the uh, reset button, and whatever piece of the memory is not active, so as you can see here, this OR gate is active, uh, but... Actually, the rest didn't color that. There we go. Uh, and that's not colored. There we go. So whatever, whatever piece... Uh, so when, when you place it down, whatever piece is not active, you want to connect the... Ooh, the reset button into, because... When the piece does become active, it'll switch to that OR gate that the reset button is on, and, you know, that's how you would reset it, so it's better. Yeah, it's kind of... kind of explains itself. So now, if we did everything right, nothing should have happened. Yay, and let's just double check that everything is hooked up. Oh, nope, as you can see here. Got to hook up that one. There we go. Yep, everything looks hooked up. That's amazing. Alright, so now let's uh, hook up the individual uh, numbers, or again, inputs. Doesn't have to be numbers in this case. So, uh, you have to remember the button that you want to pretty much, again, to, to activate the bit memory, the thing that is currently active is the thing you want to connect the button into. So this way now if I press zero, as you can see it switches input, and then if I press the reset button, it resets it. Again, very simple very elegant, very nice. So now let's connect that to there. Yeah. And then this one to there. And this one to there. This one to there. Ugh. Don't want to have multiples connecting to one. Blah. And blah. Now, the reason why I did choose bit memory and not switches is because, well, uh, this way things can be reset. There's a... Logic can physically change the input and or output of the thing. I might don't know that button is there. It didn't need to be there. Uh, but... Yeah, it just... It's it's really, uh... Really, uh... Everything here is kind of self-explanatory because it's, it's, really, it's really simple. So, we're just going to do a test here, so I'm just going to press... Every piece of memory here, and if all is well, that ends well. Everything should be active. And what we're gonna do is, so we're gonna input the codes. What is that? Uh, so it was zero, four, two, seven. So as you can see here, zero, four, two, and seven are active because you can see they've switched the positions of what is active and what isn't. And if we hit the reset button. There we go, everything is reset. Now, uh, don't know why I didn't put this down earlier, uh, but really this is just the output block. It could, th this, it's, it's recommend, uh, well, it's not recommended, it is actually necessary that there's an and block here, but you know what, I'm actually going to change the position of where it is, just to make things easier. Uh, because pretty much this determines, well, not what the code is, but what key, what, what things need to be on for this to open, because it's, so uh, first, I'm just, before we connect all that funky jazz, I'm just going to want to connect these two together just because it's been bothering me. And now, as you can see, I'm going to take what would then be so the active state. So I, I consider this inactive. Uh, you might consider I don't, I don't know. So I'm going to take what is going to become the active state and then put that into each of each of them into this AND gate. So now, if I input the code, doesn't matter which way I put it in. Oh, whoops, I'm an idiot. Let's reset that. Zero. Four, ten, ten, there we go. There we go. As you can see, the AND block is on. That wasn't a, the first time wasn't me, it wasn't a uh, logic mistake, that was just a me mistake, that was a me being a little dumb. And there we go, it resets, we're all good. Yeah. 
And now for the fun part. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the... Is it every input? No, right. So we're going to take the inputs of every block that isn't connected to the AND gate. So every piece of bitmap that isn't. And we're going to put that into the OR gate at the bottom. Because we remember what the OR gate does is active if any of the link triggers are active. So what this means is the second I put in a... Uh, whoops. The second I put in a part of the... Uh, part of... Input... Select a input that is not part of the bundle of correct things uh, will reset the entire thing. Uh, right, that one needs to be hooked up to there. And that one also needs to be hooked up. So let's just double check here. That one's hooked up, that one's hooked up, that, that, that. Yep, okay, so all's well that ends well. Uh, Alright, and then now, the AND gate. Organic could be an OR gate. It just, uh, as long as it is something that isn't in, like, the... Oh, excuse me, as long as it's not in the inverted ones, where it's, you know, if it's off, it's on, it's on, it's off, kind of thing. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the AND gate, and we're gonna put it into all of the... Set pieces, isn't it? and that, that's this is why the this AND gate becomes important because if I say try to connect this OR gate to this one again here, well, as you can see, it disconnects it. So that's why it's important. So yeah, we're just going to connect that to every output block again. Because remember, if we change, so it, it, if we activate it, it'll move to this uh, part of the. Uh, bit memory here, which will then send a signal to the, this OR gate saying that, oh, something's active, and then it'll send it to the AND gate here, which will then pretty much send an input back into the block that was active, which, remember, switches what it's displaying. So that's, again, how that works. It's, again, it's a very simple thing. And remember, this AND gate uh, needs to go into every single block to be a reset. Uh, I'm at the top is, so let's do a quick test here. So let's put in, let's actually input some of the proper code here. Yep, so you can see here that those two have indeed become active, and let's just press a random button. Yep, everything's at, uh, everything's been reset. And essentially, it's actually done. Uh, the rest of the things that are on here, such as uh, oops. Oh, did I remove lights? I probably shouldn't have. Probably shouldn't have gotten rid of that if I knew I was going to be remaking this. So what I'm just going to do is... I'm just going to... Again, put some indication lights on here. I'm just going to lower the range on them, and then I'm just going to color them, you know, this time let's do, and you know, let's just keep it like that, there we go, and let's connect the AND block, or AND gate, AND block, up to that, and it's, it's finished, it's done, uh, or not done, oh my god, I'm such an idiot, what we need to do is we need to put the, uh, outputs of the white, uh, gates, the, the white, the, the actual code things into these lights to pretty much indicate that you've put in the correct code. So let's do zero first is zero for two and seven. There we go. So now if I put in zero for two. Seven. That's nine. Zero. But see, we we saw we see that it did work, which is good. So zero. Oh, hold on. Zero. Four. Two. Seven. And look, the output is on. And then once it's on, if I press, if I literally just press any other key, that's not the right one. It doesn't have to be the reset one. Uh. 
it will reset it so I can just do that it'll reset the reset button isn't necessary but it's good to have instead it, it, it's just it, it makes it a very uh, nice button and also if uh, you do end up if, if again I do come back to this and I do decide that or I, I will come back to this and I add like a again a particular uh, again a, a part of logic that makes it so you have to put in things in a certain order or else it will uh, reset it this way it's a full code kind of thing uh, the reset button will come become pretty important I feel so yeah so it's it works the same as this one I believe this one was the uh, uh, up, yep, I right, put that, reset that, and then this one is zero, four, two, seven. There we go. So yeah, so this has uh, been my tu uh, my little uh, logic tutorial, I guess, on how to build a very simple uh, logic lock. Uh, again, it's pretty simple, and uh, the majority of the time was ten actually spent explaining it. In reality, it only took me again like. To, th to actually think of this design was like, oh, it's 10 minutes in total with building kind of thing. And again, that was just because it was the first time again. If you, the bit, the more you do something, the better you get at it kind of thing. So uh, yeah, but uh, either way, if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to like button if you want to see more of my content, subscribe and leave a comment down below as it is appreciated. And uh, yeah, either way, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.